Do you ever feel that your brain is actually shrinking and you have brain atrophy? Well, as you age, the brain potentially could shrink by 0.4% every single year. And that can lead to all sorts of cognitive deficiencies, like a lack of focus, a lack of attention on something. You are very ADD. You can't complete things without starting something else over here. Your memory isn't that great. You can't concentrate and focus like you used to. And a lot of that has to do with just losing the amount of brain that you have left. So when your brain actually shrinks, you actually lose circulation. And you also lose your ability to use glucose fuel. So you can't actually get the fuel in the cell anymore. Um, so Alzheimer's patients, for example, Parkinson's, their nerve cells cannot absorb glucose that well. So they basically starve and they don't connect anymore. There's a lack of communication. So is it possible to grow back your brain? And how do you do it? And yes, it's possible. And here's how to do it. There's several things involved. Uh, one is the B vitamins. Your brain needs a lot of B vitamins. If you're deficient in vitamin B1, for example, one of the symptoms is amnesia. You start forgetting things. So that's very, very important. B6 is very necessary. B12, very, very important. So your brain is composed mostly of fat. The nerves are insulated with fat. And when you become deficient in B1 and B12, you start to lose that fat uh, myelin sheath around the, the nerves. Also, uh, folic acid is very, very important. You also need an omega-3 fatty acid called DHA. A good percent of the fat in your brain is that type of omega-3 fatty acid. So how do you get this? Fish, fatty fish, uh, cod liver oil, and this is a really good product that I recently started using myself, cod liver. This is not uh, sardines. This is actual cod liver. It tastes a little bit like tuna, but it's like pudding. It's like tuna pudding. It's really actually quite amazing. Uh, I'll put a link down below so you can order some of this, but uh, you just need a little bit each day to get your uh, daily amounts of DHA. And you also need phytonutrients. Phytonutrients are kind of give you that protection against environmental stress. It's the, the toxic effect of foods, poor diets. So all that oxidizes the tissue and creates free radicals. So phytonutrients can help protect the damage from that. All right, let's talk about blood sugars. If the blood sugar is too high or too low, or you have what's called insulin resistance, in which it'll be your blood sugars will be kind of normal at first, but you have high insulin. This is going to create a, a massive problem with your brain, and this is probably the most common problem right here. I have tons of videos on it. I'm not going to get into it right now. I'll put a link down below. But blood sugar problems will cause neurodegeneration, and then you have the stress component, which you, if you're under stress, the high levels of cortisol can also create a very similar effect. And by the way. High levels of cortisol will, will mess up your blood sugars, okay? So it's a combination of, of cortisol directly creating a problem and the insulin creating the problem from the blood sugars. And of course, not sleeping from the stress can greatly affect the function of your central nervous system. All right, and of course, you have the smoking and the drinking will affect the brain physiology too. Now, if you're in a situation where you don't have the full capacity of brain function and you're starting to lose your focus and concentration, um, you don't want to run the majority of your brain on glucose. There's another fuel that you can run your brain on. Part of the brain needs glucose, but don't worry about that because your body can make it, its own glucose from fat or protein in your diet. The thing about the brain is the brain doesn't have a stored sugar reserve. It doesn't have glycogen like your muscles do. So it depends on what's going on in the blood. So if there's not enough sugar in the blood, then it starts to starve. And that can come from what's called insulin resistance. And so despite having a lot of sugar in the blood, if you have insulin resistance like in your brain, it won't work. So you don't want to run the majority of your brain on glucose fuel. You want to run it on ketones. Your brain cells love ketones. If you have any question on what a ketone is, watch the video on ketones I put down below. But ketones are the byproduct of burning fat and your brain cells will be much more efficient energy-wise uh, running on ketones. And now last, the most important thing is this thing called intermittent fasting, where you're not eating so frequently. And of course, you're going to do the combination of both of these.
But intermittent fasting will increase this compound in your brain called brain-derived neurotrophic factor, BDNF. This is like miracle grow for the brain. This will help regrow the brain cells, okay? So you have to do a combination of intermittent fasting and healthy ketosis to get your brain to come back. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Hey, before you go, if you're benefiting from any of my content, I would love to hear about your success story. Please share it in the link down below.